All right, I think we are just about here. All right, Facebook. Hello, folks on Facebook. Um, I am coming live with you, for you, for this 11-11-11 transmission, this 11-11 portal day at the 11 o'clock hour. Hmm. Things are just coming through. I was not expecting to come on live right now um but i was just like majorly guided and so i am here and i'm going to be delivering a lot of messages for you guys so i'm not going to be looking at comments i'm just going to be allowing this to flow through i'm here on instagram as well so if you see me looking back and forth although i'm honestly going to have my eyes closed probably for a majority of the time here oh <sighs> take what resonates with you and leave what doesn't instagram folks i'm hearing that some of you are needing to hear this a second time so i'm really appreciating that and honoring that for you some of you have not been allowing oof, oof. some of you have not been allowing yourselves to listen to your inner ears listen to your voice listen to your inner voice i want to tell you guys a story i was in harvest health the other day and there was um there's a, a person manning the cashier and um, there was this lady in line in front of me and she wasn't wearing a mask and she was giving him all sorts of trouble for having his mask on but pulling it down when she came over. And she was like, why do you keep your mask on? Like, just take it off. Why do you keep it on? Just take it off. And he was like, I don't know. Like, I'll take it off when people are not wearing theirs and then I'll put it on when people are wearing theirs. And she's like, well, why, why are you molding to the collective and like, why are, or she didn't say it exactly like that, but that was kind of what was coming across and she was like why are you you know just be authentic to yourself and keep your mask off and be authentic to yourself and I when I was I was wearing a mask and and when I got up to the counter he pulled his mask back up and she left and I looked at him and I said if you don't want to put your mask on with me you don't have to I said do what feels good and right for you like, don't listen to her even. Like, don't listen to me. Don't listen to her. Listen to you. Do what feels right for you. Do what feels right for your body. And I know this message might be really triggering for some people, but y'all, it just continuously, it continuously comes back. It comes back every single time to body sovereignty. Every single time to body sovereignty. Listen to your truth. Listen to your voice. Live your truth. And sometimes your truth might have other people in mind, right? My truth is that to me, it's respectful to wear a mask. To me, that's my choice. It is respectful to wear a mask. That's my choice. Sometimes it is self-protection. Sometimes it is self-preservation. And I know the difference because I can tune into myself and I can see, ooh, yeah, for some of you, it's gonna be, you just wear a mask all the time because like that's that's what feels safe to you and you feel protected in that. For some of you, it's going to be, you don't wear a mask because perhaps it affects your breathing and you don't like that and, and it doesn't feel good to you and doesn't feel good to your body. Um, you know, and, and we can extend this to, to other things as well. I wasn't trying to get political at all in this channeling, but that's what came through and that was the example that wanted to be shared and that was the message that wanted to be shared and I'm really, really surprised that it came through so blatantly because normally these things don't. <clears throat> but I want to get back to what I was sharing about the light and the false light because this is a really important message for you guys. Right now, the false light, false light is called false light because it looks like light. It has this illusion to it. When we look at light, it has the ability to kind of reflect and um, show up in whatever ways it's wanting to be seen. We have to keep in mind that right now what's happening is that the light 
almost has these mirrors around it that are reflecting the false light around it and reflecting that false light back out into the collective back to us and so we might think that we're interacting with the light i feel a lot of you resonating with this right now we may feel like we're actually working with the light and resonating with the light when we're not and so and, and it's because we're not taking that moment we're not taking that extra hair of a second to really connect in with the truth of our essence with the truth of our being with the truth of the love that we are we're not taking that hair of a second to tune into ourselves and see what's real and see what's not see what's false and see what's true and i really want to encourage you guys to listen listen to your inner voice listen to your inner ear listen to your inner knowing and see where it matches and where it doesn't match. And sometimes it can be a both and thing. Sometimes, and this is how the false light works, you guys. This is how it works. This is how it works. I'm also taking a moment just to acknowledge whatever twin flame templates are here right now, whatever twin flame codes are coming through. I sense there are a couple of you who are watching right now who are in twin flame templates. The template is obviously very, very, very strong today. Like, wow, I'm feeling it too. Big time, you guys. Big, 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 big time. So for those of you in separation, I just want to give the message out for you, to you, that this is a beautiful time for you to come into union with yourself, to really, really, really find that next level of sovereignty. And actually, this doesn't just go for Twin Flame folks, this goes for everyone. Using this time, mm, mm -hmm. Using this time of separation within the collective to go within and to truly, truly, truly find your sovereignty, find your sovereign nature, find who you are, find how you resonate, find how you don't resonate, find what resonates with you, find what doesn't resonate with you. I'm going into song. I love you. Listen to your voice. You have a choice. Listen to your inner ear. You know what you'll have to hear. Breathe deep, breathe deep, breathe deep, and let it go. 
Breathe in all you are and let go of all the rest. Breathe in all you know and let go of all the rest. Breathe in all you're open to receiving and let go of all the rest. Breathe in all the light and let go of all the rest. Just the light, just the true light. Just the true light. Just the true light. I'm feeling false light paradigms trying to come in right now. I'm like, <laughs> crackle that shite apart. That happened for a reason. That happened for a reason because you guys needed to feel that difference. And if you didn't feel that difference, I highly suggest going back and watching this replay once it's posted. My eye is twitching major right now. Whew. Going back, watching this replay, and feeling that moment. Feel that moment. Because it's a hair of a difference. It's a fraction of a hair of a difference. It's so subtle, you guys. This false light, it's so subtle. It's so subtle. Mm. I'm hearing that the time is now to share something with you that I have been waiting to share also going to take this off because it is getting hot. I wrote about this in an article months ago, but I only kind of hit the surface of it. I didn't hit the full thing. The collective wasn't ready. I wasn't ready. My twin wasn't ready. It was time for it to kind of like trickle through slowly. I feel like we're all in a place now. I'm going to turn this down. We're all in a place now where the transmission is ready. When I was seven, eight, nine years old, I had horrible insomnia. And before bed, well, I would go into bed and I wouldn't be able to fall asleep. And I would be lying there, my eyes glued to the dang ceiling. And I eventually trained myself how to astral project because I was just so bored of being there and laying there in my body. Whew. And one night this woman came to my bedside and she offered me her hand and she said, are you ready to fly? I'd like to take you somewhere. And I said, yes, I'd love to teach me how to fly. Of course, like what kid is not going to say, yes, I'm going to fly, right? And so I took her hand and she pulled me out of my body, or I, I guess I went out of my body willingly. And we flew over my bed. I had this chair in the corner of my room. And she took me behind the chair and she showed me the trap door in the floor. We went through the trap door and ultimately landed at the bottom of a rainbow. There was a cloud at the bottom of this rainbow and she invited me to sit on the cloud. And I sat on the cloud and we went on the cloud and we went up, up the rainbow, kind of like almost like a little cloud elevator. We went up the rainbow and our, we landed at the top and the cloud took us to a bigger cloud. And this giant cloud was above the earth and it was looking down. And she had me sit sometimes on the edge of the cloud because then this started happening night after night after night after night after night. I mean, it was probably every single night because this is my playtime, right? I was like, I can't sleep. Where's my guy? Let's go play. Let's go play in astral realms. So night after night, she showed up. And sometimes when we got to the top of the cloud, we would sit on the edge of the cloud together. And other times there were these two tall like almost like thrones and I would sit in one she would say the other one is for your twin of course I had no idea consciously what that meant at seven years old um or even at even at like 23 um but 
sometimes we would sit in these chairs and sometimes on the edge of the cloud and she would point to me across earth and there were always people behind me they always just looked like shadows or figures that I couldn't fully make out and she would tell me those were my soul family some of them were there on earth with me already some of them were there way before me and some of them were coming after um, and we would look out onto earth and she would tell me you are preparing to lead a spiritual war on earth. Those were the words that she used. You are preparing to lead a spiritual war on earth. You are originally from here and you were sent down there and you didn't want to go because you knew how hard it was going to be. But you and your twin are going to be helping the people down on Earth to fight Evelina Magenta, is what she called it. Sounds like a comic book character or something. But I understand now, and through more recent meditations over the last couple of years, that this was her name for the false light. Because she would say, there is Lena there is magenta and there's Evelina magenta. And what I understood is that Lena is like star seed source energy. Magenta is the true light here on earth. And Evelina magenta is the false light. And she had to put it to me in those terms so that I could feel the energy of it and so that I could understand it as a kid. And we would go, I brought this out to the playground. I brought this to the recess yard. Um, and I would play with all of my friends. Um, she told me that this place that we were from, it was called Skyly. Um, and so I'd play with my friends. And it got to a point where, you know, we grew older and probably around old 10 or 11 years old my friends stopped wanting to play this with me because they were like this is you know a stupid game like we're too old for this now um like this is a game of pretend and I kept saying no it's not pretend like this is real this is real this is real and they're like Rachel no this is imagination like this is a game of imagination and part of what I want to bring through right now is just this this light <laughs> didn't even mean to say that, but this light shed on this idea of like, please, 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 I implore you, go back to your childhood, see what imaginary games you used to play and see if there's truth to them. See if there is truth to these imaginary friends that perhaps you used to hang out with um, that are more likely guides for you, soul family members, um, yeah, I implore you to go back and, and reconnect with that because you don't know what messages you might have received as a kid that you can then bring through to the collective now. And I, I really, I encourage you to share whatever those messages are. I encourage you to share them outwardly with the collective because um, we're needing that right now we're needing that medicine we are the ride the revolution and what is this revolution bringing about this war that we're in this spiritual um oh i'm clearly breaking the internet connection here on <laughs> according to facebook Big transmissions coming through you guys. Um, this spiritual war that we are fighting, it is the uprooting of all of not only the darkness, and I don't mean darkness like shadow work or like things that are necessary and part of the light. I mean darkness as in as in evil. 
um, all of the dark mechanisms that are in our society and ingrained in society and all of the false light mechanisms, which are of course darkness, disguise. We are uprooting all of those things. We are shining our flashlights on all of those things, all of these paradigms, all of these societal mechanics, all of the ways, whoo, whoo, all of the ways in which we have integrated into our systems all of these things and we're uprooting them from the collective and we are separating them we are dispersing them we are we're separating them separating them out i might lose a lot of followers for saying this but it needs to be said do you know what is false light left and right they're both false light do you know what is false light anything that goes against body sovereignty anything that goes against being able to listen to your personal voice your inner voice what does my body need what does my body need because anything beyond that be anything beyond what your body needs one way or the other that's not the truth. That is externally impressed upon you. When we make our decisions, we need to listen to our inner voices. And I cannot tell you how many people I have heard on one end of the spectrum or the other, because I have clients in both realms of existence, many clients in both realms of existence, probably an equal amount actually it's very interesting I have clients in both realms of existence who have made one decision or another and have regretted that decision of course one decision it's too late to change your mind the other you can always change your mind and I want to throw that out there too you can change your mind if you're feeling peer pressure to not do something that your body is saying this is the truth Please listen to that. You do have the option to go change that. Unfortunately, on, on the other end of the spectrum, which tends to be the side that most people are feeling the peer pressure on, there is no going back on that. And so my heart goes out to you. And I just want to say, if, if you're in that position, I just want to say, look at what a beautiful lesson this is in learning that you needed to listen to your voice. You needed to listen within and not without when we connect within that's when we can more efficiently connect without I want to share something with you guys I want to share something with you guys this is real personal but it's wanting to be shared I had a very beautiful and illuminating moment the other night. Very important. Very important. For the first time ever, I entered into a space where my twin most prominently kind of hangs out. Um, I did this not to find him, not to connect with him, nothing like that. It was specifically guided by spirit. And I, ooh, it took everything in me <laughs> to discern that and to make sure that that was why I was doing this thing. But ultimately, I recognized it was my truth. And he wasn't there, which I'm actually incredibly grateful for because it gave me the opportunity to have this experience it was the first time that I showed up in a space like that where I was 100% myself and some of you might be really shocked to hear that because I know 
I am always preaching, be yourself, be yourself, be yourself, be yourself. And guess where that preaching comes from, y'all? It's from my own lessons. Right? I, I turn my wounds into wisdom. That's what most practitioners do. And honestly, any practitioner who's not doing that, what are they doing? Because if it's not their experience, how do they have experience in it? This is my experience. My whole story is about self-abandonment, like always, from the beginning, from the beginning. And it's just been about fine-tuning, little tweaks and twerks here and there. Big ones before, now it's the small ones. Now it's the small ones. This was, I would argue, one of the, one of the last pieces of the puzzle for me. Because I recognized, after this experience, that I have been showing up as my twin and not as me, even though I know same soul, same energy, but different though, you know? Um, I've been showing up as my twin because there has been some piece of me that's felt like he's the one who's more important or he's the one who's more powerful or he's the one who um, people will pay attention to or um, I I am not I'm not worthy for whatever reason or I should say I had not been because I don't feel that way anymore I don't feel that way after showing up the other night and being fully recognized as Rachel separate from my twin and it's when we recognize our own separateness that we're able to more cohesively and intentionally come together in truth. This is the entire reason for this whole thing, beginning with the illness and then integrating in all of these other political things that have come down the pike. We have been tested on literally every moment of separation in every facet of our beings. Why? So that we could begin to learn discernment or fall in with the crowd. One of the two. Discernment is the light. Falling in with the crowd is the false light. Sitting in front of this fire, man, Spirit's really wanting me to be very personal with you guys today, so I'm just listening. Sitting in front of this fire is a really important thing for this transmission, specifically. I've done many things in front of this fire. I've been many things in front of this fire. I've become many things in front of this fire. But specifically what's wanting to come through, hmm, what's wanting to come through is that four years ago, I had a very, very specific experience with my twin in the physical in front of this fireplace. And it was a huge epic moment for both of us where I held space for him to heal. And he held space for me to heal. And then we came together and we literally wrote out how the two of us were going to work together to help the collective to heal. Yeah, I know. I know. It's magic. It's magic. And when I helped him to heal, 
what he was working through in his healing when I was holding space, what he was working through was helping to come to terms with himself and his own internal shame and guilt for how he had treated other people and his own reconciliation of self in that way. When he helped me to heal and held space for me to heal, it was for me to be seen in my sovereign being, in all that I am, in all that I was, in all that I am, without needing to attach to another person or become another person or take on another person's energy. And when we came together to hold space for the collective, what we articulated in our little outline together, big outline together, was that I am here to hold space for individuals in the collective and to help individuals reconcile with themselves and, and really understand how to be their own person and how to come to a place of mental, emotional, energetic, spiritual, all the same health and wellness, right? Which ultimately comes from connecting within, listening to that inner voice, feeling that inner essence, right? And then bringing that outward to meet the collective, which is essentially what he is in charge of, is helping to bring together communities, helping communities to heal, helping society to heal. What we didn't know at the time is that both of us were going to be learning both lessons. <laughs> and both of us were also going to be in charge of both. It's just that our souls were reminding each other how that works. And I feel like that's why I am here now with you guys on this live, alone, as Rachel, sitting in front of this same, same fire, during this now, this new point in time, four years later, that no one in a million gajillion years, unless you got a huge psychic hit, which I know a couple people did, could have ever imagined being the case. But here we are, and it's beautiful. It's painful, but it's beautiful, and it's necessary. Why? Because we, again, are being tested. And we're being tested to come into our individuality, into our sovereignty, into our sovereign nature, into our sovereign selves, so that we can then join back together as a piece of the whole. It's no accident that this is happening as the planet Saturn, which is the planet of lessons and of order and of societal order. Saturn moved into Aquarius literally the moment that lockdown happened last year. Like the week of. Aquarius is the sign that governs community through the act of individuality. Being able to embrace your sovereign self to then create a community as you meet with other people that is aligned and in truth and creation force. A lot of you you're feeling a lot of your heads exploding in the best way possible right now. That's awesome. I'm just going to like clear some of this. And bring to you to come into your full self into your individual sovereign self Hallelujah. 
so that we can rejoin together in community as a collective that's built on the value of sovereignty that respects both the individual and the collective because it's both and they both belong together they are puzzle pieces <sighs> And we have to shape our own puzzle piece before it can fit into the puzzle. I've said this before and I will say it again. If your puzzle piece looks like someone else's, even though, even, even if it's your twin, even if you share the same soul energy, if your puzzle piece looks exactly the same as theirs, it is not going to fit into the puzzle because their piece, their slot for their piece is already taken already taken so guess what then you don't fit there's no place for you anymore if you are not yourself there is no place for you here i know what i just said Whew, it hurt it hurt to hear a lot of you for a lot of you if you are not yourself there is no place for you here There's no place for you in the new earth. Hmm. A song came through a couple months ago. I shared it on my personal Facebook. Um, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna, it's just gonna come through now. And I wanna give a shout out to Marcel Kahn, who is playing the guitar and channel, helped me to channel this through. Um, but it's, um, be yourself. Be yourself, no one else has your magic. Be yourself, no one else has the ability to be your reality. So be yourself, be yourself, be yourself, be yourself. Be yourself. And it goes on from there. But that was the part that wanted to come through for y'all. Be yourself. Be yourself. When my twin and I came together and we wrote out our to-do list and we talked it out. Because this is what we do, guys. We talk. We talk. We talk for like hours. <laughs> we talked it out. Um, and our eyes were like crazy eyes because all of the serotonin and dopamine release ever. Um, it was made very clear to both of us that I needed to step in and do my job first before he could come in and do his job. I.E. Again, this, reiter the, this reiteration of we have to come into our sovereignty. We have to focus on the individual first. The individual, the individual, the individual first before we can focus on the community, before we can focus on the collective. Because again, if you don't know what your puzzle piece looks like and feels like and smells like and sounds like and tastes like and is, there's no way that we can build the actual puzzle. Especially if there are millions of people who don't know what their puzzle pieces look like, feel like, sound like, etc. So what's happening now is that everyone is slowly but surely having their own little mini awakenings, whatever that looks like for them, whether that's a spiritual awakening, as we so call it, um, which like, I'm like, if you awaken to yourself, that's just the most spiritual awakening there is. Um, whether you learn what energy frequencies and portal days are or whatever, or you're, um, you know, focusing on like, I don't know, complete atheism. I don't care what it is. Um, if you reconcile with yourself and you have an awakening of who you are, that is the most spiritual, spiritual awakening that anyone can have. As we each have our own little versions of these awakenings, um, little by little, bit by bit, person by person, but also so fast, because look at all that's happened in two years. Holy cow. Um, that's when we're able to like slowly recognize like, oh, okay, 
my puzzle piece fits here and it fits next to yours and it fits next to yours and it fits next to yours. That's why all this soul family is coming together all of a sudden. Just so beautiful. It's like, ah, my heart. <sighs> but I want to come back around to what I was just saying about this personal awakening too, because I, and I, I spoke about this when I came on live a little bit yesterday to you guys, you guys, you guys, you guys, you guys. We are getting so caught up in the details of spirituality. And I'm sick of it and I'm done with it and I'm calling it out. I'm calling it out. Did I make a post for 1111 today? Absolutely, I did. Why? Because I was called. Because it felt good to me. It felt like an energetic celebration and something was coming through and, you know, whatever. That felt good to me. I celebrated that. We don't need to know the spiritual meaning of every single thing we do. We don't need to assign meaning to every single thing that we do. We don't need to be researching every number in our numerical system to understand its numerology. We don't need to be researching every system of astrology. We don't need to, we don't need to, we don't need to, we don't need to, we don't need to. We just need to freaking be and enjoy. And if things come into our paradigms where we're like, oh, okay, this makes sense. I, or, or you're led to go learn something. You're led, you're led to be with it. It sparks you, right? And again, here's this discernment of the light, false light paradigm. And this is one of those where the light is wearing false light clothes, y'all. Um, the light is spiritual alignment, spiritual awakening. The false light is all these little details. And these details... He, these details can sometimes be the light and here's how you can discern here's how you can you can figure out the difference and super 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 important this is medicine you guys if you are reaching if you are grasping if you are trying to get information i'm gonna cut all those <laughs> if you are reaching to get information that is false light if you find yourself chasing a rabbit down a hole, that is false light. If you are trying to get high off of spiritual information, that is false light. If you are gaining the information, learning the information, receiving the information because you're opening to receive it and you're allowing yourself to receive it or it's making itself known, it's coming to you, that is the light that is the lena that is the magenta that is the light the rest is the evil lena magenta the rest is the false light when my guide came to me night after night after night and brought me up to this cloud she would tell me thing after thing after thing after thing after thing. every night she would tell me something different and i've forgotten a lot of it but i remember a lot of it thankfully mostly because every night she would say i am bringing you here every night so that you remember this because you are going to be in charge of telling people this later guess what it is 22 years later i know magic number it is 22 years later and i am finally freaking telling you guys why because it wasn't ready until six months ago six or seven months ago six months six months i got the hit at the end of may okay it's time it's time I started with the door, or I started with my twin, then I went to the door openers, and then I came out in my article to the collective. So here we are, and I'm just going to keep dropping these messages for you guys because my job is to remember and to therefore help you guys remember. And this is where that twin contract is a is a both and thing, right? Because this is where where I'm in charge of the collective is helping the collective to remember but on an individual level too. So there's that. But um, what, what I would like to remind you guys of is that we are all on the same side. We just forgot. I'm going to let that sink in. We are all ultimately on the exact same side. We just forgot. And these things, just like 
in the spiritual community, the numerology, the astrology, the blah, 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 they're all the details, they're the false light, right? If we're not called to them, if they're not coming to us, if we're not receiving them. Just like those are the details there, that's the false light there. All of these paradigms, this side or that side, this side or that side or this side or that side. The more we get together, the happier we'll be. It's a freaking preschool nursery rhyme, you guys. It is a preschool nursery rhyme. We know this stuff. We're all on the same side we just forgot. Why? Because we are getting deterred. We are getting distracted by these external details. We are being told, pick a side. We are being told, defend that side. Who are you defending? Who are you defending? What are you defending? Because I, I don't know about you guys, I am defending the human race. I am defending the human race. How am I defending the human race? By not picking a side. How am I defending the human race? By recognizing that those sides, one or the other, whatever side it is, they're details. They are distractions. They are false light. How am I defending the human race? By coming back to my own personal sovereignty, healing this beautiful vessel I am in, that is me and encouraging y'all to do the same because I can tell you that is one dang beautiful vessel that you are. We are a bridge. We are a bridge between ourselves and ourselves. And you can choose which side of the bridge you stand on. Okay, transmission feels complete. I'm gonna go ahead and read through these comments and then I'm feeling called to probably close up. Um, I forgot my laptop was not fully plugged in, so we're gonna just do that real quick. Okay, let's see what's come through. Okay. I am not seeing anything on Facebook. So, hello to the person who is there. Thank you for being here, thank you for watching. And we're going to take a look at Instagram. Wow, there's a lot here. Um, Nicole says, having the most wild and vivid dreams. Yep, makes sense. Hey, Christy. Hey, Karina. Nicole says, this is resonating so powerful, powerfully with me. Thank you for these messages. You're so welcome. I'm so glad they're resonating. Um, yes, there is more than one side. Choice always, and I will respect yours, so please respect mine. Boom, yes. And y'all, if you have not checked out Life's Daily Balance on Instagram, um, She's been posting some fire stuff about sovereignty, so I just want to give a, a plug and a shout out to her on that. Um, Chris, hey, thanks for being here. Um, Claire, thank you for being here. Becky, thank you. Hello, Georgie. Hello, Shani. Shannon. Nikki. Emily. Cartier9995. I don't know who you are, but hello and welcome. Thank you for being here. Um, Nikki says, love the way you articulate Goosebumps pure twin flame energy. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Um, do much healing has happened is and is happening and makes perfect sense. Yes, absolutely. Um, Nicole says, this message has been so validating. I'm so glad to hear that. I felt like an outsider. Yeah, and that's the thing is so many people have felt like outsiders and, and you're not. And that's... The more we come together, the happier we'll be. Like, seriously, I saw a post on Instagram the other day that just lit me up. I think I, I posted it on my story. Um, and it was like, if you, feel, if you feel like you're out of the majority for not wanting to join a side, you're not. And it had like 17,000 likes on it. And it had been posted like five hours prior. So... I don't know if that gives you any feeling of like, you're not alone in this, but honey, you are not alone in this. White72, thanks for being here. I don't know who you are. If you want to drop your name in the comments, I'd appreciate it. Mol, hello. Thanks for being here. Hope you're well. And Jordan, 
Thank you for being here, Brooke. So good to see you, Bridge Sister. I love you. Um, and Becky says, this message makes so much sense to me and connects so many things. Thank you. Funny how things I've been working through personally is in line with your transmission. Absolutely. A hundred percent. And that happens because what's, what's going on now, there was really, there was really a beautiful shift. And I think I've spoken to this before, but there was this beautiful shift that happened. Um, when, when the lockdown happened where like suddenly, even though we were, and again, with separation comes the the platform for unity um when we went into lockdown this wild and weird thing happened where we actually assimilated psychically um and so basically like our psychic paradigms as a human race um were more interconnected and there's been a lot of research on this which is super cool about how when tragedy occurs um, it actually has people unite um, on an energetic front. Like you can actually like test people's frequencies and the frequencies are at similar levels. The frequencies of earth actually raise and they are measured. Like this is a scientifically measured thing. Um, and, um, and, and like, yeah, there's, it's, it's very cool. There, there's some real cool things with this. Um, but I bring that up because, um, I have been channeling for the collective so much more fluidly since lockdown happened. I mean, I used to, I used to do it beforehand in my articles and stuff, but, um, but it's been so much more like before it was like, okay, you know, anybody who's drawn to my articles, they're going to be resonating with this. Now it's like literally... I'm hearing like 90% of the collective needs this message because it's in alignment with everyone. Why? Because we're all the same puzzle, y'all. We're all a part of the same puzzle. And so whether consciously or subconsciously, we are, um, we're needing the same messages right now because um, we're all moving together. Even though we're separate in so many ways and it feels like we're apart, we're all moving together. Nicole says, thank you for sharing that. You're so welcome. And Becky says, whoa, brain exploding emoji. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> I hear you. I hear you. It's a lot. It's a lot to take in. Hey, Jenny, thanks for being here. Okie dokie, my loves. Mm, 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 mm. Um, well, it has been an absolute pleasure to drop in here. Of course, um, you know, I, I do feel called to say um, all of this stuff comes comes through me freely. Um, I, in the past, I've thought about like making specific events for this kind of thing. And it just, it doesn't work. It doesn't work because, um, I am not, I'm not in that space. Like when I channel for the collective, it, it needs to just like come through. And so that said, any donations, um, if you feel so called, are very greatly appreciated and you can donate to at doorway to self on Venmo or dollar sign um, doorway to self on cash app and you can also um, donate via donorbox.org that's d-o-n-o-r-b-o-x dot o-r-g slash doorway to self um, so those are all ways that you can contribute if this um, if this touched you in a way where you're like oh my god I'm feeling so much abundance right now and I want to share that um, I, yeah, it's it's very very much appreciated, um, and may it multiply times three for all of us. So, <coughs> oh, energy coming through, needing to be cleared. Woo, woo! <laughs> oh, you guys, I'm feeling your love. I love you so much. I love you so much. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for adding to this. <sighs> Your energies being here also helps this transmission to come through. And that also goes for any of y'all who are watching the replay too. If this calls to you, I really invite for you to like it, share it, um, throw it out there. Um, you know, because really, truly, truly, truly my mission here. Um, is, is to get this message out to as many people as it possibly can reach. So I would really appreciate it if that could be a thing that happens. Um, and I am sending you guys so much love. Please, as you go through today, this 1111 slash 45 portal, 
this four or five energy is really calling you to step closer into alignment with yourself, right? Ascension. I just heard my fire like when I did that. I don't know if you guys heard that. Um, but um, <laughs> that just made me so happy for some reason. Oh, Jordan, love you. Um, uh, yeah. Um, stepping closer into alignment with yourself, which means shedding these false light paradigms. I am, I am feeling them majorly, 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 majorly into this, in this portal today. And I felt it last year too. And last year, actually on the 11, 11 portal, day was when I started symptoms. So, um, if that tells you guys anything, portal days can work both ways. Everyone gets excited about a good portal day, but guess what a portal is? It's an opening, which means that literally anything can come through. So I want to invite you also to protect yourselves today. Um, asking that and mm, okay, I lied. I'm ending with this. <laughs> this is what's wanting to come through. Mm. Taking this only if it resonates and it's in your highest good. I am calling upon that wind just picked up. Woo! <sighs> We are back, y'all. We are held and we are back. I am calling upon divine light codes and divine light codes only to come in and burn away all that is false light around us, helping us to see the path in front of us only through the lens of light and the lens of love, both are which this are the same frequencies. Asking that any false light paradigms be shed. Asking that this portal come through in a way that is only aligned to the highest good and to the highest timeline. Bringing in energies for the new earth, which include, of course, coatings of sovereignty, truth, justice, compassion, alignment, respect, and specifically respect for autonomy, and community through it all. Soul family. Soul family, soul family, it is time, it is time to see the light, it is time to see the light, it is time to see the light. I love you all so, so much, and so it is, and I will see you guys on the flip side. Cheers to whatever dust and rebirths you might experience today, the fall and the rise. I love you, love you, love you. Take care. Thank you.